coordinator who will consult with them on how to fill it out. Um, they have to prepare their pitch. And so mm -hmm. again, the innovation advisor is there to consult and advise um, you know, anyone in L&D that is preparing this. And then the advisor schedules a date for which the individual will come in and make their pitch to L&D uh, leadership team members and some of our global IT uh, team members. And they do their pitch uh, to the group. And after the pitch is concluded, concluded uh, we can ask questions. And as soon as the Q&A timeframe is finished, then basically we vote right on the spot, um, just in through chat. And, you know, again, the innovation advisor is managing this whole process. And, you know, the vote could be approved, move forward with an experiment, not approved, don't move forward, uh, approved with tweaks or pause. This could be approved, but not right now. Come back at a specified period of time and ask again. So these are all the ways that we can vote. And then basically it's kind of, we go with the majority. And if it's approved for an experiment to move forward, then it's, then it goes into the pipeline and goes through the phases. Can you give me some examples of technologies that you've, that you've run through this, this system um, and, and the outcomes? Sure. Uh, so we have had you know a uh, AI chatbot go through the system um, idea. We've had a video coaching tool, marketing automation technology. Um, we recently actually had someone from outside of learning and development, um, but it was a a pitch for something that had to do with learning and development. Yeah. Uh, come to us with a technology to experiment with this whole concept of how do we move more towards learning in the flow of life, uh, which was interesting and creative. Um, but I'll give an example of the chatbot. Yeah. Uh, we, um, the hypothesis for the chatbot was to use it as a, um, a coaching chatbot for our manager skill development um, learning experience. And so the idea was it would be a, you know, an AI uh, coach for the participants going through. And we had a, a, a control group. And so they were very aware and, and they opted in. Hey, we want to experiment with this. If you want to be part of this, let us know. Um, so everyone opted in. We had a small group. I think maybe it was about 25 or so. Um, and we experimented with this, this coaching chatbot. Well, long story short, um, while the chatbot uh, <laughs> was not at the place of intelligence <laughs> to be able to serve as a real coach uh, right. in the true sense of the word coach to our, our learners, uh, what we did find is an alternative use. So through that learning, um, we realized that, well, gosh, if we ever used a chatbot again, it would be a great learning advisor. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as people go through their digital learning experiences, sometimes with the, the busyness of work, the questions are, where, you know, where am I in the process? What do I have to do this week? You know, what are my deadlines? And having that learning, simple learning advisor right at your fingertips to answer any questions as you're going through the learning process on any of the logistics or administrative, um, you know, would just help with productivity and an ease of engaging with the learning. And so didn't meet the original hypothesis of a true coach, but we did identify an alternative use for that technology if we were able to uh, deploy it again. Interesting, interesting. Um, you mentioned marketing automation, which is, that's not a learning technology, ostensibly anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about how that experiment went? That experiment is underway as we speak. Okay. And, um, you know, essentially, uh, you know, our strategy is digital first. So in about 18 months, uh, time frame, we redesigned all of our, our learning portfolios um, into digital learning experiences. And so we have very few, if any, uh, you know, in-person designs that are still active. Well, and of course, right now with the pandemic, we don't have any, 
But even before the pandemic, we had made a very much of a pendulum swing um, right. to digital. And, um, and so what we realized is, you know, also with digital and the democratization of learning, we wanted our, our employees to be able to self-register for and access any learning that they wanted whenever they needed it. And so what that did was we no longer had our HR business partners determining who would attend what or nominating people for different programs. So that basically dissolved that whole process and that, um, you know, involvement of our HR business partner um, who would also be able to talk about all the learning offerings to the business. Um, we no longer had individuals as captive audience in a classroom where we could talk about other learning solutions or what might be next. So in that reality, we needed a way to connect with our employees to uh, continuously put in front of them the learning that was available to them. And we wanted to do it in a way that was not just pushing out emails, um, you know, broad-based emails. We wanted to do it in a way that was more personalized. So mm -hmm. if they're in a sales job family and they're just getting started with Cargill and right now what's relevant to them is their onboarding. And then maybe in about three weeks, what's relevant to them is starting to um, take some of the educational content on Cargill sales process. But, you know, timing the different type of learning experiences that they need given where they're at in their uh, career journey. And so this marketing automation technology um, enables our team to uh, build out um, kind of what we call journeys um, uh, and, and be able to time specific points along that journey to where an email or a message would be triggered to an individual based on where they're at and hopefully um, the type of content or learning experiences that are relevant to them at that moment in their career. And doing it all in a pre-programmed automated manner so that there is very little human intervention. And so, again, we're experimenting with a, a small group and we're getting some learnings. Um, I don't know if it'll work for us. I hope it will. <laughs> um, but but that's where we're at. Uh, it's just right in the middle of that experiment. So uh, I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm really fascinated to hear more about that. I think, you know, these nurture journeys, they call them in the marketing in the marketing world, where they, over time, sort of build someone's propensity to buy or engage seems extremely relevant to to a learning context especially where as you describe um it, it's it's democratized and it's self-service very very interesting i'd love mm -hmm. to know how that goes um what other technologies do you like in terms of possible future impact are there other things you're evaluating or you'd like to mm -hmm. well um you know, I don't, I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm not a tech technologist. So um, if, if I try to speak the language, it's going to sound very clunky, so I won't. But, um, you know, one of the things that I'm very interested in is, um, you know, when we think about our consumer experience of online buying, um, mm -hmm. and I think, of course, we have been more attuned to what that experience is given COVID and not being able to you know, go out to stores or go to, you know, shops and doing a lot of our shopping, um, you know, online. And I don't know about you, but that experience just has become so personalized. You know, I don't know if it's just all the, you know, the cookies that are being uh, dropped in our <laughs> profiles. <Yeah. laughs> and, you know, it, it seems like nowadays that you know, a thought can just come into your mind and the next thing you know, it's showing up on your device. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's magic. And uh, so, I, you know, I've just been thinking about that experience and how great would it be if our work experience um, caught up to that type of experience, you know, to where just whatever we needed in that given moment to be productive, uh, whether it was learning or any other type of productivity tool that um, just based on how we worked, the tools we use, the things we were working on, that we had technologies in the background that could provide us with very useful things in the moment of need 
you know, again, someone way smarter than me that knows all these advanced technologies would know what it would take. But I just, I hope someday that our, our experience that we can provide our employees gets closer and closer to that consumer grade experience. And then on a very, very simplistic note, um, which COVID actually made me appreciate even more is, you know, shifting to that hundred percent virtual and, uh, you know, using all the different types of video um, collaboration type tools, mm -hmm. you know, it's one thing where you can log in, turn on your video, and maybe you've got nine squares of people and everyone's on video, but the interactivity can be very clunky because you've got people talking over each other, interrupting each other, trying to be polite. And one of the tools that we've really come to love, and it's very simple, is, um, you know, the mural uh, tool where it's uh, virtual post-its. And yeah. anyone that's on a call can just start going in and, you know, working in a very synchronous way and getting everyone active and engaged. And you don't have to worry about anyone talking over each other, or interrupting. Um, and, you know, it's great for non-native English speakers as well um, uh, to be able to think through what they want to put on a postie and, and move things around. So simple collaborative tool, um, but big impact, uh, especially during these times. I love it. You should, you should try, um, you should check out spatial.chat, spatial with a T as in the space around you. Sure. Um, it's a great, um, it's a great application, which I think was set up really for a kind of like large community gatherings mm -hmm. where you can physically move around the, the space, the screen. And as you get close to other people, you can hear their conversation and you could maybe walk over to another part of the room and, wow. and listen into another conversation. It's really great. Check it out. It's a, I, I got to experience it last week at a conference I went to and it blew me away. Uh, really, really cool. But there's lots that of good stuff amazing. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fun putting those to work in programs, your leadership programs or any or so on and so forth. Uh, really sort of making the experience more human. Yeah, um, tools like that, that we just, I, I think we need more and more of to make that experience um, a, a really engaging one. Yeah, and that's what I love about your innovation process there. You can go try these things out really quickly and find ways to deploy them. Um, I'm looking at the clock. I want to be sensitive to your time. There's a couple of questions I wanted to um, ask you, though, before you, you leave. First is um, kind of the future for L&D. Um, talked before about the optimism in your team and the relevance they felt they were providing. Um, how, how do you think about the future of, of L&D as an exciting place? Are you going to spend more of your career in this space? You know, I, I, think, I think for the foreseeable future, it's a very exciting place to be. Um, you know, I think there's one aspect where just the whole excitement and energy and possibility about reinventing yourself as a learning and development professional, um, I think is hugely exciting. And personally, that's what I've been going through the past three years. You know, I've been in this field for over 23 years, but the last three years, I have been, you know, reinventing my own skills and my own knowledge. Uh, and, and so that has been hugely exciting. And so, you know, one of the things that I encourage, you know, all of my team and even my peers and, and when I'm, you know, doing podcasts like this is, is just um, enjoy the journey. Um, we, it is a very exciting time for learning and development and exciting in that we have the opportunity to play a very critical role for our organizations. And, um, you know, I hear a lot of, you know, from different teams, stress around, you know, we can't keep up and, you know, what do we do with all these new technologies and, you know, all of this um, stress and fear. But if we flip that around and put a frame on it, that's about, you know, excitement and possibility and the opportunity that we have to play a, a more critical role than we've ever been able to play for our organizations and the direct connection to how we help keep our organization skills competitive um, is so clear. Um, and, but what it's gonna take is that willingness to let go 
of the 